Hi. So I've talked to you about qi before. I've talked about um, I've talked about qi as a metaphor. I've talked about qi as a dynamic system. I've talked about qi as a wave, and I've talked about Chinese meridians. So you've got a bit of a grounding. I haven't given you details about the meridians, and so easier if you look this up. Look it up. It's fine. Ask me for papers if you want. Look at the meridians. See where these channels are and the direction that of travel in them. And then understand your Tai Chi in a way that makes use of that. So you don't just wave your arms, flap your arms around and think that you'll miraculously get better. If you want your heart to improve, work your heart meridian. Work it by the way that you move. So there are basically two parts to this. The first part is understand where it is and flex all the way along it. So you can choose moves and you can check if these moves help and you can interpret the moves in a way that encourages this to happen. So let me give you a simple example. Um, drive away the monkey, drive away the monkey. I'll be quite contained in this movement because of the the camera space that I'm working with. So if I look a little hunched, that's why. But drive away the monkey. When I do drive away the monkey, I'm like this. Now, like this. My back arm lifts. My back arm lifts and it goes backwards. So I don't do this. Arm down. Don't do this. Also, don't do this. Why am I lifting my arms and pulling one back and pushing one forward? I'm doing that because I'm opening my chest and your heart and lung meridians both come through this area and just doing this flexes them. Also, um, the heart meridian comes up here and then under the armpit and up. So under the armpit and up. So if you want to flex it, you need to open your armpit. Open your armpit. In. Now I'm doing this, it looks a bit weird. Um, my second finger here, just tucked here. See this? So my top finger is about in the armpit and the second finger is just here. If I put my second finger here, I will feel it. I lift up, I can feel it. I can adjust till I feel a point. And when you feel this point, point of pressure, pressure point, you probably, you might not be, but you're probably on one of the meridians. So you can practice working that point. You don't have to press it or massage it hard, but if you just move and understanding that point will understand that you're moving it. So I'm here, I'm working my heart meridian and I do this, I can feel the points moving, which means I'm flexing my heart meridian. If I do this, Nothing's happening. If I do my move like this, nothing's happening. Nothing. So I need to pull back. Look how I'm opening here. Also, my heart meridian comes down my little finger. Down the, in fact, this is just the inside part of my little finger. And so I want to twist my arm as I come back. And you'll feel the pull in the little finger. Twist your arm. As you come back, you feel the pull. So this is helping work my heart meridian. You can think of it in another another move. So let's give you another move. White crane spreads its wings. So white crane spreads its wings. I go up here. Up here. Look how I'm opening here. This works really well. But also, um, I'm working my large intestine meridian. So your small and large intestine meridians both, the, there's, they flex around your shoulder. Yes, they go to your intestines. Don't worry, they connect in. But I, um, without giving the whole picture, they just come up and here and then through. So shoulders help your intestines. Um, if you put your hand on your shoulder and you do white crane and you do this, you'll feel that very little is happening. I do white crane and I do this, I feel a lot is happening. So 
I don't need to, I can find the uh, meridian channel pressure points. You can do it using your fingers to depress um, and, and find the points. But uh, this isn't a lecture about how to find them today. It's just put your hand on your shoulder. You can play with your fingers to see about the points, but then pull and then see how it changes. When you change, you're helping that meridian to work. So when you do your Tai Chi, you do white crane like this. Nothing happens except you think you're being clever and you aren't. Sorry, people do it like that. Why? I have no idea. Um, open here. It's all right to do this. It's okay to do this. Um, you see in some forms that we do the Beijing 24 step and you see, pe see people do white crane like this. Yes, but look, I'm not doing this. Understand the difference. We do it this way. Look. Look at that opening across the chest. Look at that. Okay. Um, if you're doing brush, knee and push, I'm going to come straight at you now. Brush, knee and push here. I'm coming through here. So my pericardium meridian comes here. You know this, don't you? It comes up here. It comes up here. And the pericardium is the area around the heart. So I do strengthen the heart by using the movements that strength work the pericardium meridian. It's a fairly straightforward meridian. It goes from here and it comes down here to my second finger. Boom. I go like this. So I go like this. I'm not doing much to it. I go like this. I stretch it. I go like this. Not much. I go like this. I stretch it. Now, this is called seating the wrist. This is called seating the wrist. Okay. If you put your uh, finger here and then seat your wrist, you can feel uh, a genuine difference here. So this is part one of um, how to use the meridians and your knowledge of the meridians to improve your Tai Chi and make it help you to be healthier. Part two is how do you make the chair? Yes, yes, yes. You put your hands like arms like this. Is it magic? You have to create a sense of motion going back to the wave. Remember the wave? Remember the wave? I talked about the wave. Send the wave along the meridian. If you can, when you study, check which meridians go out to in or up to down and which meridians go in to out. It's easier to get the wave right. Um, I'm working pericardium meridian, just like I showed you. I'm coming from in here and I need to extend my arm and seat the wrist to make, make that be worked well. Okay, but if I can make a flow happen along it, so much the better. In Tai Chi, they say move the Yi with Yi, move the Qi with Yi, uh, move, the, move your Qi with intent. Well, if you're very good, if you're very good and very clever and very experienced, you can just do this. I'm doing it so you can feel the move happening, the wave inside you. They call it internally. But you can make the motion help you. So move like you're moving a wave. I'm not just going that, that, that. I'm thinking, how can I make a wave along that path? Think of waves at the seashore, or I don't know, in a pond if you want, you wave in your garden pond. Send a wave along, send a wave along. And I guarantee, if you practice doing this, fill your breath here and understand as you exhale, you're sending along here, 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 up to here. You're sending along a wave. Make your body work like that. Flex it and send the wave along. So breathe in. Recently, I was talking to uh, what we call the hard arts 
artist is someone who's done a lot of um, fighting arts and he said he uses the same um, feeling when he's uh, breaking boards so he punches through boards he gathers his energy here and he sends it along in a wave to the point of contact so you see me do it or there's one of our office manager Marie uh, doing something like this there are some videos around of this happening see if I can find them for you um, so the wave I'm here in up and wave along send the wave along in out repeat slowly in out repeat okay so there's some tips on how to harness chi and introduce it into the way you do your tai chi so enjoy that <laughs>